Now, you're on the board, uh, advisory board of Facebook. This is about mobile advertising, so we should probably talk a little bit about mobile strategies here. What's Facebook's mobile strategy? Well, Facebook has been active on the mobile platform. Uh, Jed Stremmel there handles mobile for Facebook, and he's, he's one of the oldest Facebook uh, team members. So Facebook has been at the forefront of mobile apps for the last four years. Um, so, that, I mean, they're, they're a real leader. Okay. Switching gear. How many followers do you have on Twitter and how many friends do you have on Facebook? I use none of the above. Really? You don't have any? I invest and add value. I don't have, I, I don't okay. spend a lot of time using the services. All right. Let's, uh, let's broaden this out. Uh, VC investing, investments in mob, the mobile sector dropped 58 cents in the first quarter and it's the lowest level in 12 years in terms of the capital invested in the, in the mobile sector. What's your outlook for investments in mobile startups? Well, um, let's talk about the iPhone uh, and, and, and just the revenue that's going to be generated from iPhone apps. These iPhone apps are all digital goods. They're, they're very low cost of sales. Uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday saying, you know, why wouldn't you buy Apple stock? When you look, there's 30,000 iPhone apps. Um, it, it, it is a, a whole new economy of mobile phone apps that are springing up from creative entrepreneurs. Um, you know, every app you can think of. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's amazing. So if you just look at the iPhone ecosystem, uh, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. If you look at one of our companies is AdMob, which serves, serves up ads to, to the mobile community. Um, you know, there's a company that, that might be the pioneer IPO when we get out of this recession. Um, they already have significant sales. They're, ver they're way ahead of Twitter in, in sales. And they're focused primarily on iPhones. It's no, no, no. AdMob is serving up ads across the whole. Sure, sure, but they have a huge priority emphasis on iPhone. Right, iPhones. right. Um, and then you have the new Palm phone coming out this summer that could also be, be very disruptive. So the, the, the mobile industry is a huge, huge industry, and, and new people are coming into it. Steve Jobs, five years ago, when he went to Scott Forstall at Apple and said, you know, build a phone, you know, a lot of people would have thought that, that, the, that the industry was penetrated. It's not. It's, it's early days. So when you, let's talk about your investments. Ron has invested in, what did we say? Well, 500 in total, 133 current. Correct. correct? Over the last 15 years. 11, but 133 is current. Well, yeah. Correct. Them in the last five years, I've invested in about 130 companies. Eight percent of those are mobile. About 11 companies. Correct. Mobile. So you have some interest in mobile. What investments, we'll just talk about some of the investments you've made in mobile and why you've made them. You mentioned AdMob, which is advertising. Yes. Um, well, well, we think in, the, in, we try and invest in companies in the mobile space that are not as reliant on the carriers uh, in order to grow and be successful. Um, so there's going to be a lot of mobile apps uh, that become huge. We're in a company called iMob, which is building uh, iPhone apps in, in the gaming sector. Um, and that's a huge, huge growth area that is not carrier dependent. That's social gaming? Social gaming. Okay. And uh, so social gaming, advertising, Related companies. What about we, they, there was a panel on geo um, targeting location based type of services? Are you focused on that? Or would you be more interested in sort of entertainment type of, of applications like Smule? Which is yeah, really right, interesting. right now we're, I'm more interested in the, the entertainment sector, but I think in time with the location based uh, sector, that's going to be a huge, huge area of growth. But in that sector, you've got to be careful of, you know, dominant players that are in the sector now, you know, like Google, mm -hmm. who are doing a very, very good job. So that might be a checkoff that, 
you know, that, that one's taken care of. And that's an interesting point you bring up. There's dominant uh, sorry, incumbents in the, in the mobile space, and you also have mobile initiatives are typically very capital intensive. So as an angel investor, where you have very, you know, not as much relative to what VCs are putting in, does that, I mean, how do you, you know, what is an angel investor, sh what should they look for in a, in a mobile um, startup? Because it's not, it, it's, it requires more money than, say, a consumer internet company. So you have to be a little bit you know, right. careful. Right. So we try and invest in companies in the mobile sector that aren't as capital intensive uh, I, I don't invest in any any aspects of hardware for mobile. I focus on software. You know, where with a group of entrepreneurs, if you can invest a million dollars, that it will get a prototype off the ground within a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is what would it take for a mobile startup to get funded by you, besides being in software? Well, I, I invest in great teams. So uh, you know, I look at I look at the entrepreneur first. And that's just my style. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I look at the idea second, because when an entrepreneur starts a company, the, the idea that they have morphs radically. You know, it, it probably morphs a few hundred percent from the company that you thought you were investing in. Mm -hmm. So that's why I really focus on the character and the chemistry I have with the entrepreneur, and that they will morph the company and realize that there's a lot of zigs and zags in the road. Um, and and invest in mobile companies where where I think they can get very very quick uh, uptake and significant growth metrics. You know we really focus on on growth. What company? What startup in your 15 years did you invest in that you totally believed in and it totally just blew up? How about Napster? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a. Uh, that was not, I didn't know you were asked that question, but there's an instant answer to that one. Because Napster could have been, uh, Napster could have been iTunes. Mm -hmm. But but people weren't willing to cooperate back then. Lots of mistakes were made. Um, and and if, if the mistakes weren't made, the music industry would still be thriving today and not lashing around. The way they they are today. Was that a question of the team or just the industry not being? I think it was. I think it was the indu the industry and the timing. Timing. What? Uh, you know, and and lots of lawyers getting in the yeah. way. <laughs> what startup did you feel uh, you invested in but didn't really want to? It basically just totally surprised you. as far as return or well, see well, every I startup I invest in I want to invest in okay and, and um, so a startup that you how about the biggest uh, in the surprise category dig.com okay how so so I invested with with Kevin Rose of dig and that was a service that that I thought <coughs> would grow obviously he's I think he's one of the best entrepreneurs out there as far as his entrepreneurial spirit and, and leadership. But I thought that company would grow a lot slower than it did. So that's one where I was really surprised. Wow, after a year, this company had huge metrics. Mm -hmm. What you brought up, Dig, so what's the future of Dig? Will that be a standalone business? Will that ever, could that be part of a media company? What happens to Dig? Uh, I think it's hard to say, and it's hard for me to predict. But but I think Dig is growing at a good enough rate that that when we come out of the recession here, you know, they could be an IPO candidate as well. When does the IPO market open up? And if you're, uh, well, we're going to open this up for questions as well. So just get those questions re prepared. And uh, I I think we're probably at least a year away from the IPO market opening up. I'm hoping we're six months away from the M&A market heating up again. So it would be great if six months from now we had some good M&A transactions in the industry, mm -hmm. which then bootstrapped, you know, uh, us into, a, you know, a, an active IPO market. At what valuations? 
Well, I mean, the market will set the valuations, but the valuations will be more conservative than they were. In 2008 and 2007. So it'll still be down. From right, and way eight. down from 2000. Yeah, of course. And uh, is that across the board in terms of the IPO, I'm not sorry, M&A market picking up? Is it what, what areas will there be more appetite for? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that the M&A market picks up in six months across all tech sectors and that the media industry gets very active in acquisition because the future of the media, media industry are, is all the innovation that's happening on the Internet today. Right. We are their future. 